Cheating is part of human behavior in all walks of life. People break the rules. You're never going to change human behavior. You just make it much harder. Here we are, two students in international journalism. We came across a new way of cheating 2.0 students on the campus were using and wanted to know more about it. We started investigating on internet and found out this practice was called contract cheating, RSA means. This is when a student pays an agency online or a direct freelance writer to do their work. Not very ethical, right? To fully understand the issue, we met Professor Thomas Lengaster, who's done some research on the topic. And what we discovered was bigger than we thought. Hi, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. There's a huge number of people involved in the contract cheating business. There are some very big companies that advertise over the internet that have a lot of workers uh, in their premises. They also have access to writers from all around the world who they can send the work to. A really modern and worldwide business network based on cheating. All you need is a computer and money. Well, your credit card. To know about the price and the process of buying an essay, we contacted agencies. As an example, for a whole dissertation, one will charge us £1,350, which is about £22.5 per page. Most of the payment will be done before, and the rest once you get the work. Prices change a bit from one agency to another. But if you really want a good essay, you have to give a no full lot of money. In his research, Thomas Lancaster reveals that business degree is one of the most subject to this kind of cheating. A student from this course agreed to talk to us anonymously. You've been approached by some people uh, offering you to write essays, right? Uh, yes, uh, when I first arrived in Cardiff, uh, in the first two weeks itself, um, um, like quite a few people did approach me through Facebook majorly, and then the other mode was through you know text messages and WhatsApp. They would tell that dissertation is very hard over here or anything like that. Do you know anyone who used these services? Yeah, there are a lot of people who've done it. Uh, Your some, friends? Oh uh, yeah, friends as in classmates, I do know them. Some of them got it done from India. Uh, some of them got it done from uh, other European nations, like they, where they've come from. And, uh, you know, there have been like equal cases. Pe people have scored more than 80, people have failed. But what are the reasons for the students to use these services? Some of them have just come for enjoyment. It's just a one-year vacation for them. Second is, they just want to pass summer and they don't want to do any work. Uh, there are few of the students who don't even actually go write the exams. So you can imagine they won't even do the essay and paying £100 and getting the essay done is something which is very convenient for them. So it always gives them convenience and uh, some of them just lack confidence over themselves. Obviously, if one friend has scored like 80 plus, even, you know, some person who, who scored like 60 would get tempted, okay, maybe let's try that person. But it's always unsure, okay, mm. if the quality is going to be very good or no, you never know. A dark business, when you pay someone you don't know, and there is no guarantee for you to get your essay done. It can be very dangerous for a student to use an essay writing site. There have been quite a few examples of students being blackmailed after they've been sent the essay, being told they have to send more money, otherwise their name will be revealed to their university, and so they'll be caught for cheating. And these students are then in a very tough position, and I'm sure there are many, many more examples than the students who've come forward and said this has happened to them. There's nothing really you can do about it, because if, even if you complain to the police or something like that, you are the person at fault. Are the student the only responsible in this complex network? With all those people involved, who is ready to blame? We asked Finn Newton, a professor at Swansea University, involved in a worldwide think tank working on the issue. Blame is a very difficult word, isn't it? I think there are lots of people with responsibility for tackling it. You know, the, the, the person who actually purchases the assignment and submits it, it's, the student, they obviously have responsibility uh, and we really would not like them to do that. Uh, I think institutions have responsibility to make sure that students have access to the things they need to do the right thing. They have access to the library services, they are taught how to reference, they're taught about the 
possible consequences of using the services. I think the regulators, um, the people who regulate higher education, have a responsibility to make sure that universities have policies and procedures in place to deal with this sort of thing. The institutions, universities themselves, I think are responsible for making sure that we use assessment strategies that cannot be bought online. And then actually um, advertising. Last year there was a story about the fact that one of these companies was advertising on the London mm. tube system. And then of course the, you know, the legal services have a responsibility to keep up with that and make sure that um, the law is up to date. But for now, nothing is illegal. Last April, the QAA, Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education in the UK, tried to introduce new laws that would criminalize agencies for contract cheating. We talked to Simon Bullock from the QAA to know what happened to their amendments. Towards the end of last year and the early part of this year, when the Higher Education Research Bill was going through Parliament, uh, we were unable to convince them that a criminal sanction uh, was necessary. Um, but we understood their rationale. It's, uh, it's necessarily a high bar to get new criminal sanctions onto the statute books. The aim of the bill was mostly to criminalise the agencies, something too difficult according to the government, as agencies hide behind the defence they are just offering academic research services to help students. They don't advertise as cheating. We presented one of them with a fait accompli to know what they have to say. This is wrong, right? Like, this is wrong, right? But this isn't guidance, no? this is cheating. I think professional bodies should be very concerned if there are students graduating with their professional accreditation who don't deserve it. Obviously there's a threat to the public interest if individuals are going through courses in particular nursing, medicine, law and um, architecture for example um, without being fully um, tested as to their competence. We're driving back across the Severn Bridge, you want to know that the person who's built it understands how bridges should be built and that they haven't bought those assignments somewhere else. For now, government only wants non-legislative measures. The QAA is still hoping to get it into the UK Fraud Act in the future, but in the meantime, contract cheating is dramatically growing in student networks and on the internet.